Hello, you're very welcome along to the Tackling Sport podcast returning once again. It's Daniel here, joined alongside me by my brother, Sean. How's it going? And delighted to welcome back our champion all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, who's had a brilliant uh, Christmas in the sun, Kieran McDermott. Kieran, welcome to the podcast. How's it going, lads? Great to be back. Uh, not too bad. We, we kind of, myself and Sean, thought long and hard to find a, a opponent worthy to take you on. Uh, a lot of them were you busy, do. but we eventually, we eventually found James Moffat from the Jairs and Leeds United fan. Uh, James, welcome to the podcast. Great to be here. An honour. <laughs> You've been uh, wanting to come on for a while. I'm actually lucky because you invited me on originally when it was Leeds Man U. And I was ready to go all guns blazing against Oli Gunnar Solskjaer and say how Leeds were going to spank them. So <laughs> that would have come back in my face big time. Yeah, that's turned around a bit since then, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, what can you do? Always bound to happen. We'll, we'll get to the Leeds game in a second. Well, guys, we'll get straight into it, Kieran. We'll start with defending champion. Uh, Wolves versus West Brom, 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. How do you see this game going? Yeah, it's actually, I think this one's an interesting one. There's a lot to decipher with this game. Obviously, it's a, it's a Black Country derby. Um, it's actually a really poor run of form for Wolves. Uh, although they did look good against Everton, it's seven games without a win. Um, which is a shame, really, considering the talent they have. West Brom, bit of a horror show, obviously. Uh, spanking by Leeds. Obviously, they got thumped by Arsenal as well. And then a cup loss to get knocked out um, by Blackpool is really disappointing. Um, so, look, distinctly lacking attacking, attacking talent as well uh, with West Brom. I'm, I'm going for a 1-0 Wolves win here. I think they'll have enough to do it. Um not much of a spectacle, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I don't, there will obviously be a reaction from West Brom, but I don't think it'll be enough to get a win. So yeah, I'm thinking Wolves home win 1 0. Interesting. Jamal, we'll go straight to you. Uh, thoughts on Big Sam first before you give us uh, oh, your him. score. Will you keep. Will you you, that, I, I was thinking he was right <laughs> up your street. <laughs> uh, I think they signed Robert Snodgrass during the week, who's just he leads legends 10 years ago when they were a poor championship team, but he's just your Andy Reid kind of player. Fat fella, yeah. technically good. So I think that's just them um, looking for set pieces, isn't it? Lump it into the big man and have a bit of uh, quality there and set pieces. So I think Sam's clutching his straws if that's your tactic already, trying to save up. Um, same with you, say, Kieran. I'm going 2 no Wolves, even though I think everyone thinks Wolves are a bit better than they are. Like They kind of are struggling. Um, so, yeah. The bubble's burst a bit with Wolves, I think, hasn't it, this season? Yeah. Uh, the Portuguese flair never lasts too long in the Premier League, does it? It's a cold winter. <laughs> it's struggled since uh, Jimenez has gone, obviously, which is that hair injury. It'll, it'll be another few weeks away. Um, the West Brom actually got rid of Charlie Austin, who was starting to co- kind of come off the bench. West Brom and went back to QPR, probably the club that he's most known for, and, and scored on his, his, his second debut last week, uh, during the week. So, that could be one they kind of let go, considering Carlin Grant is, is an injury doubt. Um, but I think where Wolves have struggled this year is trying to break down the, the teams that kind of sit compact in a big block. So maybe 1-1 one, one for, for West Brom. Interesting. We'll move straight on to the main event, uh, Moffat, and we'll stick with you. Leeds versus Brighton. Um, I might have dropped a little text to you there saying that Sean was muttering something under his breath watching the Crawley Leeds game after 3 0 defeat. Something about Marcelo Bielsa. It was a master class for him. Master class. <laughs> Bring on Do you want to defend the great man? Half time. Show how thin the squad is. That's an extra 50 million to spend now in January. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on Leeds? Because obviously it was an amazing start. Um, Sean was giving them a lot of criticism at the start of the season, but they have seemed to hit a small bit of the rut, although, in fairness, and they do keep eking away the three uh, look, points now and again. Once they stay up is all that really matters. Um, I think the squad is just thin and I think they will be Brighton. 3-1 I went for. Brighton have six injuries. Uh, three of them, Connolly, Lamptey and Lallana. Like they're going to be playing Ben White right back and he just doesn't give you the same going forward that Lamptey does. So it's three centre-halves at the back. Um, yeah, I think Leeds should win well. <laughs> Power is in that, but... Sean coming for Bielsa quite often in this podcast and Robin Cock especially, Sean. We've had 50 cups over that and that's only going to continue. Out till March, huge loss, huge loss. Yeah, you have, you've been very timid at the back, obviously, with Liam Cooper just coming back I think as well. But... The Spanish fella, Diego Lorente, is back as well uh, this weekend. So I think it'll be Lorente and Cooper at the back. Hopefully they're both fit, but Calvin Phillips is out suspended. So yeah, Strua, Cooper, Payne, yeah. centre-back could be in his defensive position. So Leeds could struggle defensively. Like if Brighton score early, they might be able to shut up shop, which 
he's when they go all out attack, it leaves massive holes trying to come against teams who are beating them. So it's all about who scores first in the game. Exactly. What do you think about Rodrigo, who at times has shown that he's got a obviously the the Spanish international that he is, but at other times he's kind of failed to disappoint. He played centrally for the large part of that Crawley game, and I I don't know how I feel about it to be honest. I'm supposed to give my undenying love to the man, but. He was brought in to replace Patrick Bamford and Bamford's outplayed him. Bamford just fits that system. But now he's playing centre mid and would they have been better off buying an actual centre mid? So there's a bit of a few question marks about Rodrigo at the minute, I think anyway. And will Bielsa, is he in it for the long haul? It's very hard to, to say with him, obviously. <laughs> he can do what he wants, you know that. He's done <laughs> enough. <laughs> Go out in the sun. <laughs> but yeah, I think another two years anyway. He's not getting any younger. Although, the way he squats down on that bucket, incredible strength. <laughs> <laughs> serious, yeah, serious strength, isn't it? <laughs> Kieran, we'll move on to you um, with that bit of Leeds fan TV segment in there. It's always good to get it in. How do you see this game going as the neutral? Yeah, I can't argue with, with James so much there. Um, Leeds are a great side to watch. Obviously, it's a, it's a real mixed bag in terms of the run of form, but they are a great team to watch. And on the Brighton side, I think they're all quite excited by the the arrival of Percy Tao. He's someone that they signed, I think it was two and a half years ago. Uh, and he actually looked pretty strong against City. He kind of beat a few defenders and stuff like that, which is exciting. I'm going to sit in the fence with this one. I'm going to say a one-all draw. Leeds could go out and beat them 4-0, to be fair. Uh, could end nil all. But yeah, I think Brighton are pretty compact. They didn't concede a whole lot of chances to City. They don't really get done in too often or at all, to be honest with you. So yeah, sit on the fence. I think one-all draw. Uh, he looked very, very sharp against City. I was actually really impressed with him. Yeah, really tight sign. I think, yeah, he's got that kind of flair that they didn't have before. But yeah, Percy Taylor looks so pretty, really always sharp. Always beats the first man. It's an yeah. interesting one. Where they've only had two wins, I think, in the league. And uh, I wouldn't say he's a manager under pressure because they kind of built the framework of the club around him. But I mean, results speak. And there's, I don't know, it's, it's getting to a stage that there's a few teams kind of being dragged into a race. And obviously, Sheffield United getting a win, but Fulham and Burnley, you know, you're, you're looking at teams you really fancy to stay up. So, you know, it's an interesting few weeks at Brighton because I don't think they'll sack uh, Potter. Two wins and, and a lack of home wins is really. Well, they're, you know, they're too far down the road with Potter, aren't they? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're too many players. I'm not, I, I don't like the I don't like the trade the back they play with with Webster, uh, Duncan, Byrne. I don't think he wants to keep a lot of possession, but I don't think they make enough good pass I think Dan Barnes a little bit too slow and, and if you look at how teams target Brighton it's down the sides of their fullback so yeah, I, I, I worry for them I really would but we'll go on to West Ham versus Burnley then Kieran, and we'll stick with you for this one um, how do you see this game going? Yeah um, it, it's it's you can probably put an argument there that West Ham have turned a bit of a corner. Um, it's strange to see Haller go. Obviously, he didn't set the league alight, but he looked at times to be a good striker and they, they don't have too many on the books. And there's a lot of pressure on Antonio coming back and hitting for him quickly. Um, but yeah, I think you know what you're going to get with Burnley. They're going to be compact. They're not going to create many chances. I'm going to say 2-1 West Ham win here. I think they'll, they'll have enough on it. I think it's just kind of the, the obvious the obvious result. Moff? Um, I'm going 1-0 with West Ham two bad teams Burnley just don't look like scoring ever uh, I'm waiting for Saad Benrahma to come good he was an absolute joy to watch in the championship last year um, yeah he expecting him to get good at some stage he hasn't done much since he's joined but he will come good trust me what about uh, David Moyes quick one uh, Moisey <laughs> <laughs> no said uh, uh, move, we'll go. We'll stick with you, Matt, for Leicester versus Southampton. Uh, these are two decent teams now, in fairness. Yeah, I think Leicester have too much firepower for them, though. Went 2 0 Leicester. I really like Leicester, just great pace. I like their midfield. Barnes and Vardy, when they're going good, they're as good as anyone, really. Um, I think that should be comfortable for Leicester. Kieran now, Southampton uh, are my second team this year, as I, as I keep saying. Sorry, bro. Yeah, that's a mock one follow. It's not personal, it's just football. Uh, Kieran, how do you see this game going? Do you think Southampton, they do have a few injuries now. I think uh, I read somewhere that Danny Ings has got COVID or to that extent. So um, how do you see this game going? Yeah, it's it's this one is interesting. I think obviously Southampton, 
I'll probably be a bit biased and say you can't give him too much credit for the result at Liverpool. It went absolutely perfectly for them. It was a, an early grey finish and then they sat back uh, and then obviously conceded a few chances but just kind of picked the game and, and saw it through. I agree with Moff. Obviously, Leicester looks seriously dynamic. Great team. And they're still in the mix despite a, a kind of mixed bag of form in the last kind of three or four day, games. They Obviously, they, they've had a couple of losses too. Um, I think they have enough to win but I think it is a good game. Obviously, Southampton are a COVID hit and stuff like that. Um, so, Leicester shading it on, on that grounds for me. So, I'm going to say 2 1 Leicester win. Yeah, Southampton win on 1 0. Like, stinking defending for the goal, sat back and defended well. Game before that was nil all against Fulham. Game before that was nil all against West Brom. So, it's not like they're flying high at the moment. Good defense there, though, in fairness. Yeah. Clean sheet against Fulham and West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> Being the long because Leicester have struggled at home um, a lot this season, losing to the likes of Fulham and, and West Ham. I don't know. I, I'm not sure about. I think Madison gives them something again. I think he's starting to find his feet. You now this is the these are the games where you, where I think you need a number ten and, and someone that's going to unlock that defence. And I think I, I've always liked Brendan Rodgers' teams. And I think with James Madison now, I think he, I, I think he's one of those players you all make. It, it's so hard, but I think he's going to make a late push for that England side because he's got so much quality and he probably gives them something there that I don't think they necessarily have I think he's an out and out turn more than maybe a greed or sure Foden who can play on the wing Madison is just a solid 10 uh, I think he'll do a bit of damage to, to set up yeah because Madison he was in the same bracket as Jack Grealish lad last season he hasn't quite kicked on this where is he going with the dark celebration though <laughs> <laughs> no. he got yeah he got retweeted by Gary Anderson didn't he so yeah. that went well that went there well <laughs> We've got, we'll go, stick with you, Ma, for uh, Sheffield United versus Tottenham. Uh, what do you make of Jose Mourinho, first of all, before you get in the game? I'd be Instagram, very interested. He's just now. brilliant. I love him. I love everything he stands for. You follow him on Instagram? I do, yeah. Win at all costs. <laughs> uh, I lost a good bit of cash there because they decided to draw with Fulham, which has annoyed me. So I think <laughs> I went Spurs 3 0. What a game for them to come back to. Go out aggressive. They're not going to concede against Sheffield United, surely. So. I think Mourinho might try and answer a few of his critics and play a bit more aggressive. I don't know why I'm saying that. He definitely won't, but... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let that go. Either. He's sticking to it, but I think Spurs should win comfortably. Kieran? Yeah, uh, I would argue with that, to be honest with you. Um, Sheffield, obviously, it was great to see him get a win uh, the last day against Newcastle. There's not a whole lot of positives there, is there? I think Ampadu looks strong. Obviously, Billy Sharp scoring a pen is, is great to see as well. Uh, but <laughs> far from a Premier League. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. You love to see it, but far from a Premier League number nine. Uh, Spurs, very frustrated. They must be with that with that uh, equaliser, um, the one I'll draw with Fulham. It was one of those games where you just nick a 1-0 win and you move on. Obviously, they missed a few chances. Um, but on the balance of a season, those things will cost you. So, Jose will be very frustrated with that. And agree with Moffat, it's a 2-0 it's a away win for me. I think, yeah, Spurs are just too dynamic, too too strong. Um, I think they'll break them down. I actually think you're right, Karen, about... I actually think the story of the Premier League has been the big teams missing chances like the, the one Son had on his left foot where he hit the post you know I've seen chances that Sterling has missed this year for Manchester City Salah against Newcastle and it's just you necessarily haven't seen that for the last couple of years in the Premier League the big teams that's where they kill oppositions and they're just at the moment those those teams aren't taking the chances and the, and the one team you would say it, that is is Manchester United in the way they've been ruthless you know the one they win at, at, at Wolves and obviously Burnley in the week and I think that's probably why they're on top at the moment. It's just they've got that little bit of, I don't know what it is at the moment, but form and the attack and third. But I don't know. It's an interesting game because I think if Sheffield United play anywhere near the high line they did against Manchester United, I think they're, they're, they could they could easily get embarrassed. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what they do. A few, and the Stevens is, is back for them. So whether he plays left wing back, I'm not sure. But I think it's not the worst game for Sheffield United to, to play uh, off the back of a win. Uh, I don't know. I think it'll be I think it'll be a two one. I think it'll be a one goal. Can they say? Oh. Um, I think they. I think they can, but I, I I wouldn't say they will. But I think they can. I definitely think they. You know, if you take what they got, I think they got thirty eight points in their first twenty two games of last last season. It's a different ball game, but they've they've three tricky games coming up, but. You never know, but I, I think there is there's a couple of bad teams in the league that are gonna they're gonna find themselves where they are. But I don't know how you could be a Sheffield United fan. They're playing ten men, 
David Goldrick picks up the ball at right wing back. Cross comes into the box. Their <laughs> number nine is out hovering around left back. Something like it's what a player he is. Like he got man of the match in the game. Like if that stayed nil all, I don't know what you would have been thinking. It's like, it's like Steve Evans football with Leeds Moth again. <laughs> Shane Duffy up top for Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> Your striker dropping deep and playing it up to your centre half. Uh, listen, we'll go to the Liberal fan for the big game. Kieran, um, you already you told us how you made sure you got in, got in how incredibly unlucky Liverpool were against Southampton. Um, they've been poor enough, though, recently over the last couple of games. Home to Manchester United, who all of a sudden, uh, out of nowhere, really, since our last Premier League prediction episode, have suddenly gotten... They're just really good now, I think, is the best way of putting it. How, how do you think... How do you see this two, this game going? Do you think Liverpool will go for the win 100% or will they be making sure they don't lose the game? Yeah, I I think it's 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 one of those ones. I remember Sean saying that it's it's a game that Liverpool can't really afford to lose. It's it's something that they can afford to draw, uh, but it's definitely not in terms of it's it's a six pointer at this stage because you know there won't be a lot between the teams. Well, likely looking right now, there won't be a lot between the two teams at the end of the season. Um, Liverpool, I wouldn't say they've been poor. I'd say they've been indifferent so far, um, especially in the last couple of weeks. There's, there's concerns there. I think the concern mainly, uh, one of the big ones is, is Trent Alexander-Arnold, giving away the ball 38 times, a Premier League record against Southampton, which was ridiculous. Like, I didn't believe the stat when I when I heard it first and then watched him back the highlights. He was just kicking the ball away every time. And considering he was the best right back in the world last season, it is definitely a concern considering how much they leaned on him, not so much defensively, but for creating chances. Um, and that's not there this season at all. And um, obviously the the one man um, who is hopefully going to turn turn the kind of uh, tide for Liverpool is Thiago. He looked outstanding against a bunch of kids uh, in the Villa game. Um, but yeah, look, he's he's got that talent. He's he's got everything about him. So I'm excited to see him in, in a proper big game. His first proper big game for Liverpool, um, which should be should be great. Uh, you know, and obviously they've they've been fantastic. They they've been a really dynamic team. There's great momentum behind them. I think the one concern has to be the form of Martial and, and the fact that Cavani doesn't look too good either. They don't really have an out-and-out number nine. And um, obviously Rashford isn't someone you can rely on for taking all those chances. That's why he plays out wide now too. But yeah, they've been amazing. Obviously Bruno has been the best player in the Premier League since he's arrived in there. And um, I've gone for a 2-1 Liverpool win. I don't think I can say it. And it has to be honest with you. Um, but it should be a cracking game. I wouldn't be surprised if United went out there and, and played well, but I think Liverpool will get the win. Uh, obviously, it's at home, so I'm saying two win, two one home win. I'm delighted you brought up the 38 uh, times Alexander yeah. Arnold gave the ball away. Moff, I remember Alex uh, Alexis Sanchez towards the end of his Arsenal career. A stat like that came up. I think it was like 30 times he gave the ball away or something. Um, I don't think you've given the ball away 38 times for the Jairs in your whole career. Like it's pretty bad. <laughs> He's saying that. <laughs> Count them wide. Yeah, well, I mean, trying to slip you through. Time. I've probably lost the ball 38 times. <laughs> uh, what do you think of that stat in general and how do you, how do you see every, this game going? what is it he came off as well after like 75-80 minutes like giving the wall away every two minutes is unbelievably impressive in itself <laughs> I think a lot of them were crosses in fairness to him but even still not to not to hit, a, hit the man from the, the cross the pregnant bird finally replied to him on Snapchat <laughs> 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 Moving on, Muff. <laughs> uh, I think this game is impossible to predict. Like, if Henderson and Fabinho start at the back, how much does that take from midfield? You know, and also if Nathaniel Phillips starts at the back, how much does that take from the Robertson and Trent trying to go forward? They're going to have to be more compact. So he looks incredibly stiff. Um, yeah, so I went to one Liverpool. Um, it's kind of funny. I don't really mind who wins. I don't want United to win because of their fans giving it the big one. But I'd love to see Liverpool lose purely just to see what kind of reaction Klopp would have. He's such a pathetic man lately. So 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 bitter. Um, I used to love him, and now I hate the side of him. In a weird way, I respect him, but I just don't like him anymore. It started with Des Kelly, didn't it? Yeah, it did. With Roy Keane after the, I think it was the third game of the season after the Arsenal game, and Roy said they're a little bit sloppy. And then the following week, they lost 7-2 to Villa. So I think Roy Keane's still living rent-free in a lot of people's minds. <laughs> Coming at the BT Sports commentator as well, or that pundit, like, just asked him a question. He was, whatever he said back to him, it was so bitter and salty. And what do you want me to do about it? You know, it's the Premier League. You might have a game every four days. RIP Virgil van Dijk. Moff, would you? Uh, who do you prefer? Who do you not least dislike or most dislike? Would it be the United fans, Liverpool fans? 
Because you mentioned oh, I don't mind Liverpool fans. Don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Eric, you're on. It's nice. Good to see you Good to hear. <laughs> it's a, it really is going to... I think it's it's either going to be... I know everyone says it's either going to be one of those... I think it was a red night or something they called it when it was nil all. And they just got it built up this game over the years. They've always had it. It's either going to be one of them. It's either going to be 3-1 or 3-2 with full of goals and an instant or it's going to be a nil all draw. I, like I said, I think this really would have been really good in the last two or three years. They've beaten the big teams. You think of the many times they've beaten City. I know they got they got bet um, post-lockdown and, and lot of stuff with Chelsea as well. But I think this is a massive, massive game for Liverpool because I think with United, no, no one's gone there expecting them to win. Liverpool's record at home was phenomenal, phenomenal. But I think there's a big chance for Liverpool to not put out a statement, but also three points that stops United, you know, going over to be six with a game. And say six points ahead on it if they win. But um, yeah. I think Klopp's got a lot of headaches where he plays. I think we could see Milner. I think it could be a game for Milner. I wouldn't be surprised to see. Like I'm not sure Henderson at centre back, but I'm I'm, I'm not sold him in, in central midfield at the moment. Personally, yeah. like he's he's good and, and he's a he's a presence in there, but I'm not sure. I, I maybe we might see Milner in there as well because he's played played a bit recently. But I mean, there is there's massive question marks over Liverpool. Ali Gunnar's gone in with a bit of form. He's got a bit of track record. Obviously, beating PSG away from home twice in his managerial career. No, it, it really is going to be, be a big game. And again, Manchester United midfield, what are they going to play? I think if that's where it could really get one of us. You can kind of control the game. Obviously, Thiago has to play, I think, for Liverpool. I think he's been kind of building up to this game almost. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Manage because I thought Manage was good against Burnley, kind of sweeping everything up. And I'm not sure if he'll, he'll go with Fred because I think Liverpool will, will almost set traps for Fred and Boy when they're on the ball to press. Because I think they're a little bit erratic. I think Maguire is very sound on the ball. I think if he plays McTominay, he's okay. But I think Fred and Boy, I think there's a mistake in them. I think they're just a little bit maybe slow on the ball. And I think that's where Liverpool could, could set a trap. And it could easily be one goal that wins it. What do you What do you think then, Liverpool? Yeah, I think Liverpool. I think yeah. I think Liverpool have just been brilliant in the big games. I think there's going to be actually mm. going to be loads of VAR decisions. I think it's yeah. going to be the biggest meltdown on Twitter of all time. Like the two, the two yeah. fan bases at the moment are ready to. Carragher and Neville as well. Yeah, Mark can't Carragher, wait. Obviously, uh, what, what, if people think he's a United fan, people think he's a Liverpool fan. So, I look hope, hope it's a big, a, a big game because I actually was listening to Jerry Carragher say, if you actually think about it, the two teams haven't massively had a big title race in years. You know, when United were at their best, Liverpool weren't great. When Liverpool were at their best. Um, under Shanky and Paisley and Ida weren't great. So I think it's, it's kind of set up this year for a massive, massive title race between the two and obviously Kansas Kansas City. It was just the 9 one, wasn't it? The win under Benitez. Uh, lads, right, we, we actually have a bit of an ACA going at the moment because there's only been one result that you haven't thought the same in terms of a team winning. So um, oh. you've all got... So I, I want something different for the last two. If anyone wants to go out on a limb on a Palace <laughs> or a Newcastle away win, <laughs> anyone want to go out on that sword. Uh, <laughs> Mark, we'll go to you, Manchester City Palace. Uh, could be, in, you, could be in trouble then because I went <laughs> City 4 0 in this one. Um, no pressure on you, Karen, but why 4 0? Uh, I don't know. Just <laughs> I think City yeah, win. I didn't look, too, yeah. didn't look too deeply into this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Raheem Sterling masterclass after his penalty miss and people are hating on him you know he's going to come heavy in a nothing game that they're 2-0 up he'll come on at half time and take the mickey out of Crystal Palace and we'll move on with Araka another he was, <laughs> he, was, he was captained uh, by a lot of fantasy uh, managers here on there after that penalty miss obviously it was a bit of a disaster yeah delighted to see that I captained the point so uh, <laughs> thrilled you love City it. yeah absolutely City are, uh, so it's, it's a serious run of form I think for City the seven wins on the bounce um, and I think the most impressive part of that is the Stones and Diaz partnership because they've looked rock solid. Uh, and it's nearly with the rotation and Cancelo was playing on the left and the right and Zinchenko obviously has been in and out and Walker was in and out. Um, it's just given them a bit of consistency in the last kind of three or four weeks. And it's, I, I don't know if that was a, a kind of deliberate thing, but it was largely fueled by COVID and they have sick players with, with COVID and stuff like that. But it's given them this kind of consistency and they just looked really, really strong. Um, I don't know. I, I can't go for a Palace win here, to be honest with you. I'm going to give him a goal. Sorry. Um, I think Ize looks great. I think he's a serious talent. Got, oops, obviously, there's some other great attacking talents on the team. I'm going to say 3-1. Uh, not much of a differentiator there, but yeah, that's that's what I think how, how I see it going. It's going to be a correct score sort of week, Sean. 
Yeah, I'm not sold on Thomas, especially at the back. I don't get why they keep persisting with Kiepke. Um, they're obviously they. It's it's a kind of game where they have done well in the past. Beat United start season B. City a couple of years ago, which actually derailed them um, massively at that stage in the season. I think Townsend scored a screamer. So uh, you'd, you'd have to fancy City. I, I, I don't think City are full of goals yet. Um, obviously, they, they battered Chelsea, but I think Chelsea the kind of let them. The three, three nil, I'd say it wouldn't be far off. All right, we'll go to the real big game of the weekend. I know I've said that twice already with Arsenal Newcastle. Um, we're recording this Thursday at about half seven. So uh, forgive us for not having the Arsenal Crystal Palace game. Uh, which was an interesting enough team. Sean, quick word on the team section actually for Arsenal before we ask the lads. Yeah, there's uh, Tierney was and Tierney and Marriott, Marriott there. I think they both played 120 minutes uh, in the FA Cup. So uh, you might actually have my point with injuries over the weekend that a lot of players and a lot of managers selected, you know, big players to play in the FA Cup. So whether, you know, teams who played midweek as well pick up injuries over the coming weeks because there's a pick up game. Not yeah. picking up again. So maybe Leeds going out of the FA Cup, Bielsa is a bit of a master stroke after all. There you are, Matthew, you were right. And how do you see Arsenal and uh, Newcastle going? Uh, I was going to do Arsenal to win, but I'll give that one to you, Kieran, for the sake of it all. I'll Appreciate it. it. <laughs> Thomas Party to come in and be an absolute fraud, back from injury. <laughs> Don't believe the he's hype. On, he's <laughs> yeah. on the bench tonight, so he probably will start, yeah. So did you say um, one all? I'll go one all, yeah. Actually, no, nil all. Nil all. Nil all. Nil all. Um, after that, stinker. Newcastle had two shots on target in 120 minutes of football <laughs> against Arsenal in the FA Cup. So let's hope it's another dull shit game. And I yeah, yeah. win on Kieran with the last kick of the ball. So Kieran, he's basically giving you a tap in here to just say Arsenal oh, home win. And you should you should win it for three in a row. I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take an Arsenal one 0 win here. Um, <laughs> I think it looks pretty positive for Arsenal, doesn't it? I suppose they've, they've got some players that have turned to form. I think Saka looks great. He looks great against. Obviously, it was West Brom, but he still looked good. Tierney then, um, everyone knew he could be a, a top quality Premier League player, and he, he looks like it the last couple of weeks, which is always good to see. Newcastle have gone back in time, bringing on Andy Carroll in the, in the 85th minute and lumping it up to him. I don't know if they're going to bring on Lauren Albert or something next. I don't know what, what, what Bruce has got planned. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of positives, positives there either. So I appreciate that. Tap in, James. I'll take that. I'll take that home win. Well, there you are. So he just gifted Kieran the victory. It's going to come down to this. So for those that uh, haven't listened before, three points for correct score and um, one point for the correct result. Um, quick word then, Sean, before we go. Yeah, it's. I think it's a bit of a trap. It's one of those games where you, you expect Arsenal to win, or you expect the team to win the season, and you know Newcastle just mix up now. I think they've, they've actually defended pretty well um, in the last few weeks. Obviously, I thought it was a, a bit of a harsh handball against Sheffield United, but it's, it's one of them. You, you know, Arsenal should win, but you wouldn't too hold too much hope. And Callum Wilson has that bit of threat where they can just. Get, get runners off and then give them a bit more support they can definitely pose Arsenal problems Steve Bruce I think he's he's, a, I think he's a, doing a decent job he's at the wrong club to do it because Newcastle should be and think they are bigger than probably where they are at the moment and how the clubs are on and yeah I think he's probably at the, the wrong club but I think they have to stick with him I think he, he should keep them up and that should be their goal they should stay up and get Eddie Howe in or someone in, in the summer lads are you Steve Bruce fans? Nothing wrong with him. <laughs> it's hard to not like Steve Bruce. I'll, yeah. Good guy. He's a good lad. He's uh, Steve Bruce. Is, I, think, I think he does get, like there's a lot of managers that get painted with the same kind of Well, uh, here's the brush. So, uh, Big Sam, David Moyes, Steve Alan Bruce, Pardew. Alan, Pardew. Alan Pardew. I think Alan Pardew would be a little bit more yeah, flashy than that. Yeah, it's, it's one of them. Look, I, I think... I think Steve Bruce has come in to do a job and, and he's done over the last couple of seasons. I don't think he's going to pro- progress the club on further. I don't think Rafa Benita has played a, um, a dissimilar style of football and, and Newcastle fans love him because he's a big name and obviously he's won the, the Champions League and the La Liga as well. But I think it's one of them. I think he's just in for, for a job and that's why I think there should be so many clubs snapping up on Eddie Howe come the summer uh, if, he, if he's available and wants a job. Because I don't think there's too many managers like Eddie Howe, and people want to get managers in. You look at Frank de Boer at Crystal Palace, and that didn't last long. Four games. And yeah. you look at someone like Brendan Rodgers, who's in a really, you know, high commodity at the moment, right? Kind of a young British or Irish coach that plays really good football and has a good track record and has been around the clubs like Brendan Rodgers has. So I think Eddie Howe could be snapped up in the summer. Would you take Eddie Howe over Mikel, Sean? 
Jesus. Um, no, probably no. not. I, I, did, <laughs> I don't like any hell, but I think he kind of needs a smaller project to get into. Um, we have a few notions as Arsenal fans, you see. Yeah. I, said, I think, like, if you look at Everton with Carlo Ancelotti, like, Carlo Ancelotti is going to get them back to being a, a top six club again or a top seven club, and they're, they're probably the best of the rest, if you like. And then Everton are in a position to attract another good manager off the back of Ancelotti's three or four years. And I think that's kind of what you have to do. Yeah. I don't think when you're Newcastle and you're, you finish 16th the year before, you can go out and get a, a Frank De Boer because you can, you know, three weeks into the season, all of a sudden you, you haven't scored. So it's one of them. I think it's building blocks as clubs. We'll, we'll leg it through the, the results here. So Wolves, West Brom, 2-0 home with James, 1-0 home with Kieran Leeds, Brighton, 3-1 for James, one all for Kieran. West Ham, Burnley, 1-0 for James, 2-1 for Kieran. Leicester, Southampton, 2-0 for James, 2-1 for Kieran. Sheffield United, Spurs, 3-0 away win for James, 2-0 away win for Kieran. Liverpool United both went 2-1 home win. City Palace uh, 4-0 home win James. 3-1 home win Kieran. And realistically the game is going to come down to Arsenal Newcastle. Um, it's a Monday night isn't it? 8 o'clock. Uh, nil all for James and 1-0 for Kieran. so we really look forward to that game. But uh, yeah, tiebreaker. Oh yeah, the tiebreaker lads. So pick the, which you could again come down to. So pick the minute of uh, the earliest goal out of all those nine fixtures. So Kieran, we'll start with you. If you wanted to have a minute and if it comes down level for the tiebreaker to stay on next week. I think I went for nine last week. Um, I, I'm going to go seven. I think, uh, yeah. Nat Phillips header. <laughs> well, 13. 13 sounds good. 13. Well, okay, cool. Right, lads. Best of luck. That's it, James. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Uh, and Kieran, yeah. thanks for uh, going for the three in a row, lads. Um, we were going to be back uh, with a show every Monday. will be our main show on Thursday for Premier League predictions. I think there's a midweek next week or the week after. So potentially we might switch that around. And the Monday show will be the Premier League predictions. But uh, lads, other than that, to say it's uh, ch- check us out on social media at Tack and Sport. Uh, Daniel here, Sean here. Appreciate you guys listening. And uh, we'll, and for James and Kieran, it's goodbye. See you next week. Cheers, lads. All the best. <laughs> you got it. In. Thanks for listening, and we'll chat to you next week. Bye.